So, uh, also, uh, Philippe Morin of Nortel recently said that high definition video, not the little stuff that um, is YouTube, is going to be the Humvee of broadband. It's going to guzzle five times as much bandwidth as regular video. And once that takes off, uh, we're going to we're going to we're going to blow into the stratosphere in terms of demand for bandwidth, demand for access to uh, internet. Now, are these gospel? Do we know all this is true? There's some controversy, but what if they're right? And as you'll see in our paper, we think they are right. All of those applications that we talked about before, economic development, education, all of those are cumulative. They're all happening at the same time. They're all spreading around. They're all using more and more bandwidth. What about the next generation, our kids? We've got 100 million young people in the United States. And where they have access to broadband, they're literate with computers. They're literate with gadgets. They grew up, in many cases, with the internet. They're multicultural. They're international. They're used to dealing with their counterparts in Europe and Japan and elsewhere in the world. They're used to multitasking. How many of us have watched our kids doing homework while the TV's on, while they're listening to music and they're chatting on the internet with 20 of their friends? You know, that's what they're used to. That's what they grew up with. And they are highly, highly collaborative. They're used to an environment of openness and sharing. They work on projects together. They've always worked on homework together. They, they interact with the internet. They're, they're in social networks and affinity groups. They use MySpace. They use Facebook. They upload their photographs to Flickr. They upload and download YouTube clips. Some of them, as they join professional groups, join professional affinity groups like LinkedIn. They love to combine things, remix media. They like to take anime clips from Japan and superimpose their own music on it and then send it out back to the video. They use more TV, more internet than they do TV, particularly the, the news. They get their news from the internet. And they are the precursors, the early adapters of video technologies. And um, Dr. Jonas Salk once said that our most important responsibility is to be good ancestors. Are we going to provide our kids the kind of communications networks that they need to be competitive in the global environment? And still more drivers. This still isn't enough. As I said, everything is expanding at the same time, adding to the need for broadband. And the ground shifting developments like the $4 a gallon gasoline. And corporations are thinking. They used to have hierarchies. Now they're breaking up tasks. All around the world, employers are breaking up tasks. They're sending pieces of it everywhere using high bandwidth connectivity to address these kinds of uh, needs. All of that requires massive amounts of broadband. And the bottom line is we're going to need lots more bandwidth capacity than we're, we currently have or are currently building. Six years ago, the U.S. Department of Commerce said that the broadband technologies of the day, then DSL and cable, may prove woefully in, insufficient to carry many of the advanced applications driving future demand. Today's broadband will be tomorrow's traffic jam, and the need for speed will persist as new applications and services gobble up existing bandwidth. My colleagues, many folks think that the traffic jam is already with us, and if it's not, it's going to be very quick.